Consensus among the undang makes the raja. That's what it is. So it's a series of consensus. You made me, I made you, and you made me. When Tuanku Manawe passed away in 1967, after only seven years on the throne, instead of appointing his 19-year-old son, Tunku Muhris, to succeed him, the undang chose Tuanku Manawe's brother, the experienced diplomat Tunku Jaffa. Datuk Klana Putra, sebagai imam undang yang empat, menyuruh Datuk Bentara Kanan menyuruh sabda undang yang empat kepada sekaliannya bahawa hari ini mereka mengerjakan tuanku naik atas tahta kerajaan Negeri Sembilan menggantikan almarhum ke kandungan. Over the years, you see this complicated permutation of uncle, cousin, son and nephews. So it shows that the candidate and the one who can become the king is open. In late 2008, Negeri Sembilan lost her revered Tuanku Jaffa. He was survived by six children, including three sons eligible to succeed him as ruler. After 40 years, the Undang were called upon to elect a successor. Emerging from careful deliberation, they decided to appoint Tuanku Jaffa's nephew, Tunku Muhris. Negri Sambilan's unique royal succession system is unlike any other in the world. The process of electing a ruler has produced a succession of rulers drawn from a spectrum much wider than in other monarchies. Royal democracy in a constitutional monarchy is always an interesting concept. You respect democracy because the tradition of democracy has existed for so long. As his family go through final seating positions for the official installation, senior prince Tunku Ali sits by Tunku Muhris's right hand. But as his father's experience has shown him, this does not mean he's automatically next in line. There's a possibility that one could be elected, and there's a possibility that's not the case. So one ends up spending uh, one's life trying to figure out what that means. And ultimately, I think it helps one become better prepared so you could say we are a democracy. Every level is elected by the people below them, not appointed by the people above. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. On the eve of his official installation, Tuanku Muhris joins his local community in the royal town of Sri Manante as they pray for their new ruler's safe passage to the throne. Today marks the last milestone of Tuanku Muhris's journey to the throne of Nagari Sambilan. Before being officially installed as the state's 11th ruler, he makes a special visit to the royal burial grounds of Sri Mananti, the final resting place of his ancestors. With his consort and three sons behind him, Twanku Muhris pays respects first to the tomb of his father, Twanku Mnawir, who performed the same rites of passage half a century ago. Dalam perantaraan waktu selama 27 tahun, Negeri Sembilan sekali lagi menyaksikan peristiwa agung dalam sejarahnya, Pertabalan Yam Tuan yang ke-9. Forty-one years after his passing, Tuanku Munawe's son comes home to finally take the throne. Although born into nobility, Tuanku Muhris grew up alongside people from all walks of life, forging close bonds he continues to maintain. When my father was not ruler, he uh, lived in a very normal environment. And that really gives one a good sense of reality. Is this more complicated than a yeah, this is surgery? <laughs> <laughs> I've been Tonku's uh, tailor since uh, he was a student uh, in the 1960s. That was the time when I was helping my father. We made Tonku's first suit when he went overseas. He was a man of simple attitude, no snobbishness, even uh, when he ascended to the throne of Negri Simbilan. 
when I read the news that Tuanku has been chosen, I gave a call to Tuanku. Sure enough, Tuanku picked up the phone and asked me whether I was prepared to come down to Suramban to serve him. I said I was not only delighted, I was... I'm honoured. Yeah. Okay, so clear. Clear. Alright, so no more... No more issues, eh, this you? Thank God it's over, so that uh, for me, but for Tonku, it's just the beginning. The moment has finally arrived for the official installation of Tonku Mukhris as ruler. Across Nagari Sambilan, all routes leading to Sri Mananti are cleared for the highest dignitaries of the land. Making their way to the royal domain of the state are government leaders, ambassadors, heads of state, and royal entourages representing all the Malay monarchies of Southeast Asia. Thousands have come out to witness an event that has retained its reverence for hundreds of years. Months of preparations have gone into observing the strictest protocols, many of which are unique to each royal guest. When you see all this come together during the installation, there's a harmonization that make it an element of romanticism, exoticism. It's never out of fashion. It's never out of fashion. Despite all the grand pomp and ceremony, fashionable preoccupations could not be further from the hearts and minds of Tuanku Muhris and his family. It's been a really long journey for my father. 40 years later, the situation happens where he does succeed his father. I'd grown up my whole life sort of just really not knowing uh, how things would pan out. But today, as Tuanku Muhris steps out to take the throne, it has never been more certain that this is his moment. Because it's not happened for 41 years. Well, obviously some um, some apprehensions that uh, whether things will work out properly. But there was quite a lot of work involved for everyone, <laughs> including myself actually and my family. But I'm happy to say they were they did work out properly. Kepada sekalian rakyat dalam alam negeri ini, adapun pada hari ini kami menabalkan. Kumukris ini almarhum Kumunawe naik takhta kerajaan negeri Sembilan. Disru Datuk Sri Amar Diraja mengadap untuk mempersembahkan peti bernian. Proclaimed by the kingmakers of the state, Tuanku Muhris is now officially ruler and only the ruler is privy to what comes next. Tuanku has instructed all recording devices be switched off. What he's about to hear is a secret exchange passed down generations strictly between the chief palace custodian and his majesty the ruler. Dalam istirahat bertabalan, apa yang berlaku ialah antara saya dengan Tuanku sahaja. Dan apa yang saya baca kepada bahagian Tuanku, satu orang lain pun tak boleh dengar. Dan apa yang saya baca itu pun tak boleh disampai pada siapa pun. Itu sebagai satu rahsia. The thing that, that really did it for me was when my father made his um, maiden speech. Uh, I was very touched by it. It was a very, very personal speech uh, that he wrote himself. Pertabalan Beta sebagai Yang Tuan Besar Negeri Sembilan merupakan kesinambungan adat perpatih yang unik yang hanya terdapat di Negeri Sembilan Darul Khusus di mana Raja memerintah dengan sokongan seluruh rakyat jelata. Apabila Beta mengenang kembali zaman pemerintahan ayahanda 
serta Nenda Beta Beta teringat bagaimana rakyat jelata hidup bermain dan membesar bersama tanpa mengira kaum, bangsa dan agama Beta berharap amalan ini akan menjadi budaya murni di kalangan rakyat untuk menjamin keharmonian hidup sebagai satu bangsa yang bertamadun. You know, it is obviously something that's very close to his heart. It's the role of the ruler to remind us of the good things of the past, but also to remind us that is always an opportunity for us to come together and and be closer and that we can be uh, more unified. As the new head of state, Tonku Muris now has the honor of hosting his first royal state banquet. This event marks the first time rulers from the other states call on him as their peer. The first course will go around 9.30. Very special event, but no reason to be nervous. It's just 900 people like all the time in Shangri-La. It is the most important event for Tuanku. We have to ensure protocol and the preference of the ruler is perfectly attended. So this involves a lot of planning. Coordination. Coordinating a huge banquet attended by the highest dignitaries of the land requires regimented precision. And no one recognizes the enormity of this event more than the ruler's appointed senior prince, Otunku Basar. We have to look at the list again. Did you find out the protocol order? Uh, and clearly, as Tunku Basar, there's a role that has to be played, and that's a very formal role, very ceremonial role. But first and foremost, I think the reason why I approached things with the passion that I did was really as a result of being uh, you know, my, my parents' son. You know, and I'm very proud of, uh, of my father and my mother uh, for everything they've gone through. According to royal protocol, the sultans do not attend the installation themselves, but instead send their regents ahead as envoys. Now that Tonku Muhris has assumed the throne, the Sultan of Brunei joins rulers from Malaysia's royal state as they call on their new brother ruler. The young di Pertuan Besar is a graduate before. The moment he takes his oath, then the rest of the Sultan Kaf welcome to the club. In a way, the Council of Rulers is a mirror image of what happens in each state. There's a lot of interaction between the rulers, not just officially, but also privately. Uh, this has continued for quite a long time, even before independence, and whatever decisions uh, come, come about by consensus. Getting here has been a long and complicated journey, but Tonku Muhris now joins the ranks of an impressive group. Here tonight are almost a third of the world's monarchs. At the end of the day, you may be a corporate leader, you may be a big millionaire, but you have no legitimacy to erect such an elaborate uh, protocol-laden uh, activities. Only the royalties can do. Amongst the rulers today, there is a former Lord President, sportsmen, they have links with the military, the life experiences can contribute immensely in the nation. There was always this uh, preference for negotiation and for cooperation. I think that has a lot to do with why the traditional institutions in Malaysia have, have survived, not just the monarchy. From this moment on, Tuanku Muhris will bring his unique experience to the table, working together with his peers in the Conference of Rulers to uphold the treasured traditions of their land and people. With his father successfully installed as ruler of his home state, Negeri Sembilan, senior prince Tunku Ali returns to his day job in the corporate environment of Malaysia's capital, Kuala Lumpur. The Malaysia we live in today has really been formed as a result of the traditions that have come before us. 
the identity and the way a Malaysian feels about him or herself is really defined a lot by the history that has come before them. There can sometimes be a vast gulf between the life that one lives in the city and the traditions and cultures that one maintains in the state. And it's really part of the ruler's role to try and uh, ensure that that continuity exists and that linkage is there. Malaysia's constitutional monarchs maintain a strong symbolic power among their people, capable of rallying them to greater heights. In the first weeks of Tonku Mufris's reign, Negeri Sembilan's football team ended a long dry spell. The last time his state won the Malaysia Cup was 61 years ago, the year he was born. He imbibes and embodies the everyday feeling of the ordinary people. But at the same time, he's now being made and elevated to that special position. And he hasn't shown that that special position is going to change him. But we do respect him more now than ever. As Malaysia's rural communities contend with the impact of modernization, they look to their traditional rulers for guidance. Like the other sultans and rajas, Tonku Muhris serves as custodian of Malay customs and head of the Muslim faith in his state. Bagi saya lah, apa yang saya dah alami, setakat hari ini ke Bali Tonku dengan rakyat saya memandang begitu petara sangatlah. Sebab Tonku ni dia terlalu kasih dengan rakyat dia. In Malaysia, a ruler's endorsement comes with a great sense of honor. Every year, his birthday is celebrated as a statutory public holiday. This is the occasion where he bestows highly revered royal titles on those who have made significant contributions to the state. Any Malaysian, how rich he is, billionaire he can be, if he hasn't got a title from a sultan, he sits at the back. As well as being head of the Muslim religion and Malay customs, Malaysia's monarchs continue to play an integral part in the day-to-day -day administration of their states. Laws passed by respective legislatures still require royal consent before they can be enacted. We are now uh, what we classified as a constitutional monarchy. I'm a constitutional monarch. And I have the right to be advised and the right to advise which means that I should be informed by the government of um, what's going on. The relationship between the rulers and the Rakyat is much more than what is defined in the constitution, of course. They are sort of a last ditch check and balance. If all else should fail and the ruler needed to exercise his prerogative to prevent uh, violence, a catastrophe, he has the ability to do so. His people will judge whether that was the right thing to do. You know, the rulers, when they are installed, in effect, swear an oath to their people. The people Tuanku Mufris has sworn to lead have, over generations, shaped a very diverse social landscape. Though they practice different faiths, they all share the same ruler. I am the head of the Muslim religion in the state. But Negeri Sembilan, like the rest of Malaysia, being multi-ethnic, multicultural, multi-religious, I am the ruler of all of them. And it's my intent to see the well-being of all levels and all um, backgrounds, people of all backgrounds. While the Malay rulers carry the time-honored customs of their own royal heritage, they also embody an unspoken guarantee that the tradition Malaysia treasures most its diversity will always have a protector. The rulers represent continuity. The ruler is there to really champion the people. It's really critical that the people who sit in these positions are very sensitive about how they balance continuity and tradition with the changing face of the world. They are here to stay for the reason, the very reason of the peaceful nature of their existence or the, the way they create a kind of peaceful environment where everyone feels there is somebody, umbrella sort of authority. 
After being showered with grand and elaborate rituals on his way to the throne, there is one important commitment Tuanku Muhris was adamant about keeping in the hours following his official installation. Almost the entire population of his home district of Kuala Pila, Negeri Sembilan, have come out in force to welcome their new ruler, a man many remember as the young prince who grew up among them. It was just fabulous seeing so many people there. You really had every slice of society. Every race was there, every you know, young and old, all wanting good things for my family. It's very touching, but it's also, uh, I mean, it also hits hard. I mean, it, it sort of really gives you a sense as to how important this role is. And uh, it's almost as if all these people had listened to what my father had to say in his speech. And, uh, you know, they came out to celebrate that. As Malaysia marches further into the 21st century, its diverse society will no doubt continue to evolve with the times. But it looks certain that there's one tradition it will never give up, the right to its royal rights.